ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون اما بعد dear muslims allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated fasting for a higher purpose the goal is not to abstain from food and drink the goal is not to be hungry and tired the goal is not to observe an outer ritual only there is a higher goal that is explicitly mentioned in the quran ya ayyuha alladhina amanu kutiba alaykum as-siyamu kama kutiba ala alladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqun o you who believe fasting has been ordained for you as it was ordained for many generations and many ummas before you you are not the first to fast fasting has been ordained for you so that you may achieve taqwa so the fast of ramadan is meant for the higher purpose of achieving taqwa in today's very brief khutbah i will go over some of the mechanisms of how and why fasting achieves taqwa because when we understand the ultimate goal then the journey becomes easier when we have the destination in mind then the hurdles that we face getting there we have more himma and courage to overcome those hurdles and in today's brief khutbah i will list three specific aspects of the fast that actually taps into the higher goal of taqwa three specific aspects of our ritual that is actually demonstrative we're doing this ritual for a higher goal the first of them number 1 what the fast does that allows us to achieve god consciousness taqwa is to inculcate in our hearts a level of sincerity and a level of awareness that allah is watching us sincerity ikhlas fasting is the one deed you cannot do to show off nobody can monitor your fast not even your wife not even your child not even your mother anybody can break the fast secretly and nobody will be the wiser the only mechanism we have to perfect our fast is to know allah is watching is to know we are doing this for the sake of allah and therefore automatically our fast it is our going to the gymnasium of ikhlas we are working out our sincerity to allah day in day out morning afternoon late afternoon evening we're tired we're thirsty we can go quietly and go and take some water drinks no we will not do so why allah is watching allah is watching even if nobody else is watching and so for 30 days we are going to the gymnasium of ikhlas of sincerity for 30 days we are inculcating the sense of allah is watching allah is sami' allah is basir and that is the essence of taqwa because taqwa literally translates as god consciousness that is the literal meaning of taqwa that you are aware that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching and sincerity is demonstrated primarily through the fast no other good deed the prayer we come everybody can watch us the sadaqa we give everybody can see when we give the sadaqa as for fasting the only being that can monitor it is allah and therefore of the strongest mechanisms of establishing taqwa is the fortification of sincerity the the awareness that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching and that is my first point about how the fast helps us in the broader goal of taqwa point number 2 of the mechanisms that help to achieve taqwa is the very important concept of being patient and sabr of sabr being patient allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises sabr in the quran and our prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said that the pinnacle of iman is sabr the pinnacle of iman is sabr what is sabr sabr means 
to withhold and restrain your actions, to control the tongue, to control one's emotions. Sabr means to act in a manner that is in conformity with the Sharia. And sabr is a very, very difficult reality to achieve. There are many ways to do it, but without a doubt, the number one mechanism to achieve sabr is via the mechanism of fasting. Fasting helps us be patient. Obviously it does. Because if patience means to withhold and restrain, if patience means to control, you know when you're angry, sabr comes and keeps your anger in check. You don't act upon anger. When you want to say something nasty, vulgar, when you're angered, oh, sabr comes in. And sabr says, nope, control your tongue. Sabr says, act in a dignified manner. Sabr says, don't say or do anything except that Allah will be pleased with it. How do we fortify our sabr? Well, what better way to do so than to train our body when we're hungry, no eating and drinking. When we're thirsty, nothing for us to quench that thirst. Why? Because we are fortifying the mechanism of sabr in our lives. In fact, our Prophet wasallam said, As-sawmu nisfu as-sabri. Fasting is half of conquering patience. If you want to achieve 100% marks in patience, half of it is by fasting. And the other half by other mechanisms, knowing who Allah is and reading the Quran and Sunnah and other aspects. 50% of your final exam on sabr, 50% of your grade on sabr, you can get it via the mechanism of what? Fasting. And obviously, what fasting does, we are once again forcing our body to be controlled by our soul. We are literally controlling via the sheer power of our will and our iman. We are showing ourselves when Allah says, don't do, I will not do. When Allah says, do not cross this line, I will not cross this line. The body is screaming. It wants its food. It wants its caffeine. It wants its water. And the soul says, no, sabr, sabr, sabr. Until Maghrib, we will not do anything. And once again, we are inculcating and we are nourishing the beauty of sabr in our qulub. And therefore, this is one of the strongest mechanisms of how the fast is going to make us of the muttaqeen. Because you can't have taqwa without sabr. You cannot achieve God consciousness without being a patient person. And what is patience? Patience is to control one's desires. That's the literal meaning of patience. Your anger is there. Your frustration is there. Your sadness is there. Whatever the emotion is, is there. In Allah's mercy, emotions are not sinful. But patience tells us to keep the emotions in check and to not act upon the emotions except in a manner that will be pleasing to Allah. So come Ramadan and we have the physical emotion if you like of hunger we have the bodily emotion of wanting to be quenched and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us the reality of sabr through psalm so once again point number two here how does one achieve taqwa by mastering patience and the fast of Ramadan will help us master patience point number three you cannot have taqwa you cannot be of the people who are God conscious Unless and until you are treating mankind in an ethical manner, in a manner that exudes mercy and compassion. Taqwa automatically indicates good manners and akhlaq. There is no such thing as taqwa and rudeness, taqwa and arrogance, taqwa and harshness. The muttaqi, his heart is soft not only to Allah but especially to the creation. The longest series of verses that describes the muttaqin at the end of Surah Al-Furqan. It's literally a page and a half of description after description. Multiple characteristics of that description involves how you treat other people. In fact, the very first characteristic, وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ أَلَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنَا وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِدُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا the servants of Ar-Rahman are those who walk on this earth with ultimate humility and modesty. And when the ignoramus want to have a fight, they say, salam, peace, we're not involved in bad manners. Subhanallah, 
How does one master good akhlaq? How does one treat people the way they deserve to be treated? Once again, come the month of Ramadan and the Muslim ummah. Wallahi, it is a miracle. No matter their level of iman outside the month, the ummah, wallahi, its iman is alive. And let nobody tell you contrary to this. The ummah, yes, there are bad things that we have to criticize. But as a whole, the heart is beating and it is beating hard. And how do you know this? Look at the month of Ramadan across the Muslim world. Wherever you are, without a doubt, people's generosity, people's religiosity, the masajid are packed to capacity during this month every single day. That is not a show. That is not one-off. Everybody controls the tongue. Everybody wants to act more ethical. Everybody is trying to control their temper. And they start treating people in a better manner than they do outside the month. And this is of the essence of taqwa. To control one's interactions with people. And to treat people in the best of manners. And to be as polite and kind and as merciful and as generous. This is of the essence of taqwa. Karam, generosity. And the month of Ramadan is the month of generosity. No poor person ever goes hungry in Ramadan. Every community opens its doors. Every masjid opens its doors for the people to come, for the people to be fed. And this is the essence of taqwa. You cannot have taqwa unless and until you are treating the people the way they deserve to be treated. And in this month of Ramadan, what did our Prophet ﷺ say? When one of you is fasting, then even if an ignorant person comes and curses you, even if a foolish person comes, tries to provoke you, you say, Allahumma inni sa'im. Oh Allah, I am fasting. You remind yourself, you can't go there. If somebody else does something, you cannot resort to that level. And so, one of the mechanisms of mastering taqwa via the fast of Ramadan is by conquering our bad manners and by treating people with the utmost compassion and kindness and good akhlaq. And there are many other things that can be said, but because of time, we will limit ourselves to these three. Number one, sincerity and the awareness Allah is watching us. Number two, the mastery of sabr and patience. And number Number three, the perfection of one's akhlaq. And inshallah, next week we will continue on the same vein. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless me and you with and through the Quran. And may He make us of those who its verses they understand and apply its halal and haram throughout our lifespan. I ask Allah's forgiveness. You as well ask Him for He is the Ghafoor and the Rahman. Alhamdulillah. All praise is due to Allah, the one and the unique. He it is whom we worship, and it is His aid that we seek. He is the Lord of the oppressed, and He hears the prayer of the weak. As to what follows, the blessings of taqwa are, are too numerous to mention. And of the greatest of those blessings, because we want to achieve taqwa, and Ramadan allows us to achieve taqwa. So, by incentivizing taqwa, by making us want to be of the people of taqwa, this should incentivize us to fast the month of Ramadan. Once we know how blessed taqwa is, once we know Ramadan and the siyam is meant for us to achieve taqwa, then we should be motivated to perfect our fasts in order to achieve taqwa. And the blessings of taqwa are too many to list, but we'll mention one or two things for today. Of them, and perhaps the greatest of them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lists only very few things in the Quran and says Allah loves those people. Hardly 12 are mentioned. Wallahu yuhibbu. Hardly 12. And one of them, multiple verses. Wallahu yuhibbu al-muttaqeen. When you achieve taqwa, you achieve the elite status of becoming beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you achieve taqwa, Allah loves you. And when Allah loves you, then you have achieved success. So taqwa guarantees Allah's mahabba. And with Allah's mahabba come so many other blessings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, regarding the people of taqwa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَرَحْمَتِي وَسِعَتْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ My rahma, my mercy, encompasses every created being. In other words, 
Without Allah's mercy, we will not be here. Every one of us, there's Allah's mercy encompassing us. But some people get Allah's rahmah more than others. Who are those people? وَرَحْمَتِي وَسِعَتْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ فَسَأَكْتُبُهَا لِلَّذِينَ يَتَّقُونَ I will apportion my mercy. The bulk of my mercy, I will write it for those who have taqwa. Everybody must be immersed in Allah's mercy to live. Or else we wouldn't be here without Allah's rahmah. But some people will get the lion's share of Allah's rahmah. And Allah tells us in the Quran, who are those people? فَسَأَكْتُبُهَا لِلَّذِينَ يَتَّقُونَ I will write my mercy. My mercy has been a portion for those who have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Taqwa of Allah brings about Allah's blessings in this world and the next. وَلَوْ أَنَّ أَهْلَ الْقُرَىٰ آمَنُوا وَاتَّقَوْا لَفَتَحْنَ عَلَيْهِمْ بَرَكَاتِ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ If only the people had iman and taqwa, Allah says, I would open up the doors of the heavens and earth and every good will fall upon them. Allah says in the Quran, وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا وَيَرْزُقُ مِنْ حَيْثُ وَلَا يَحْتَسِبْ Whoever has the taqwa of Allah, I will help him from sources he never expected. And I will make a way out for him from places he never knew would help him. Whoever has the taqwa of Allah, Allah will help him in this world and the next. Allah's mercy surrounds and envelops him. Allah loves him. Allah shall protect him from every calamity in the next life. Taqwa of Allah is our ticket to salvation. Taqwa of Allah is our ticket to salvation. And the fast of Ramadan helps us to achieve the best ticket. Therefore, brothers and sisters, embrace the fast of Ramadan. Thank Allah that Allah in His mercy has literally gifted us the reality of fasting so that we can achieve the higher purpose of taqwa. Thank Allah for being of the Ummah of Islam. Thank Allah for being where we are. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, who, who has guided us to this. Alhamdulillah. الله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله اللهم إني داع فأمنوا اللهم لا تدع في هذا اليوم ذنبا إلا غفرت ولا هما إلا فرجت ولا دينا إلا قضيت ولا مريضا إلا شفيت ولا عسيرا إلا يسرت اللهم اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام اللهم والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم من أرادنا أو أراد الإسلام والمسلمين بسوء فاشغله بنفسه وجعل تدميره في تدبيره يا قوي يا عزيز عباد الله إن الله تعالى أمركم بأمر بدأ بي بنفسه وثنى بملاك ذي قدسه وثلث بكم أيها المؤنون من جنه وإنسه فقال عز من قائل عليما إن الله وملائكة يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صلي وسلم وبارك وأنعم على عبدك ورسولك محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين عباد الله إن الله تعالى يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العظيم اذكركم واشكروه يزد لكم ولذكر الله تعالى أكبر وأقم الصلاة فيا ذلي ويا خجلي إذا ما قال لي ربي أما استحييته تعصيني ولا تخشى من العتب وتخفي الذنب عن خلقي وتأبى في الهوى قربي فتب مما جنيت عسى تعود 